Okay, I'd like to go ahead and call this uh, meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everyone that's with us today. Uh, Susan Dozier is also with us today. Thank you for joining us. Always fun. Um, we've got a fairly packed agenda, so um, we'll try to go ahead and jump right in. We know several of you have to leave um, by 3 o'clock, so in effort uh, to do that, we'll go ahead and move forward as quickly as we can. Uh, first order of business is going to be the adoption of the agenda that you have before you. Uh, that was previously emailed to you. So um, I'll need a motion on that, please. So I have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion? <clears throat> All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Next, we have our March 28th, uh, 2019 meeting minutes. Um, we'll need a motion to uh, approve those as well if you don't see any uh, uh, errors or corrections that need to be made. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion on that? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Okay, motion carries. First order of business is also going to be the budget uh, presentation and public hearing that was set for today. And uh, uh, we've obviously notified the public on that. Glenn? Absolutely. And what we want to do for this is we want to first present um, some information so that everybody's on the same page. As you know, our budget is incredibly, incredibly complicated. These are the five lines of the budget. It's real simple. Money comes in, and we, we take out an administrative fee. That leaves net for distribution, and by law, one-third goes to pink money, promotion money, pink, pink money, and the um, two-thirds must go to tourism-related expenses, capital expenses. That is the sum total of your budget, sir, and thank you. Um, Hold it, hold it, Glenn. This was this current year, and this is the proposed budget for FY20. Sorry, I was going too fast. So they did increase the income, and you're going to see some other stuff there. They're, they're very conservative, as you know about that income thing. So this is the proposed budget for FY20. Forget okay. Thank you. I guess we'll recess the regular <coughs> meeting and open the public hearing. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak in regards to the budget? Wow, it's that interesting, huh? <laughs> I hear it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't Hopefully this will carry on to the city, but uh, no, um, I don't there's know. no one here to speak, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and reconvene our regular uh, meeting. And with that, we'll obviously need a, a motion to adopt the budget. I make a motion that we adopt the budget as presented. I have a motion? A second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The okay, budget is passed. Next order of business is going to be the strategic work of the authority. Uh, first order is the uh, current promotion status. Uh, Glenn? Well, we want to talk now particularly about this document that we have provided to you in draft form. And um, it's if, if you need more copies, we have behind us. This is also online with your regular agenda as it was. As you know, this is a project that we're really excited about, is about having a written strategic plan. And it gives us something to work from and with and give us guidance. And we owe a lot of that to um, the suggestion that we got to take the Randall study, in which we looked at actually how people, why people are coming and staying in our facilities. And as you recall, um, this was back in 2017. It was based on data basically that was 2016. And so it gave us that look as to what people were driving here. We also had some visit in sea research and we had a wonderful panel of some fantastic people, including among them Peter Bowden, who we have relied upon for our um, tourism re reunion project. Chris Cavanaugh, a former marketing director for Biltmore, who has his private practice now and is incredible. Lynn Menges, um, the head of the North Carolina Restaurant Lodging Association, Teresa Beecham and Susan Dozer, and um, we really pushed things together on that matter as it was there. We got some great advice during that time, and it was basically from um, the, the combination and Judy Randall, the marketing guru that she is and the business is it there, um, gave us these three points. Deal with your outdoors, the sporting and events, and the military, and connect those things together. And so that's where we have worked from on the point. You might recognize a couple people in that picture, by the way. And so um, the concept was to leverage 
greater weekday visitation by inviting business travelers and military visitors to extend their visit. Now that's not unlike things that we have done before. But go full tilt on the military reunions. And thank you Lisa Mirabito and Lorette for carrying that flag high and very visible. And then Bargain Beach, the concept that it's a good place to stay and go visit the beach from. And the reputation as a retirement destination, build that, start that work to make that happen, and go after meetings. And again, our partnership with the Chamber on advancing that effort as it was there. Well, this was a transformative time for the authority and for the staff and for what our marketing was. That we went basically from festival and event-based activities to being incubators, to being uh, developers, and to doing things in a much more strategic map. And as such, we created the strategic initiatives. And these funded projects, some we started and didn't continue, and some that we've advanced and kept, are the military reunion project, sports development project, docent tours and visitor experiences, you know, are all part of that strategic initiative that we were hoping to show would drive overnight stays. And we said, we're going to look at this thing every year, see what their trends, what their indicators are, and make adjustments if needed as it was from that point. Now, the power of our story is what we want to really talk about, the story about our military community. We want to continue the quest for the multi-purpose center, and we want to continue working with our outdoor assets, build on that this year since the Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center will be coming online, and new this year is to really push arts and music. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But also, as part of, the, we want to support what the Jack Swanson Sports Commission found in their strategic review of how best to operate their business and go forward with it. We know there's power of sports. It's also one of those wonderful things that is virtually recession-proof. Mother and dad are going to make sure that kid gets to some place to play and do something such as that. And that works, and it happens. And so to talk more about this and the, the how the Sports Commission's strategic plan has been changed in the last few years also, I'm calling on Scott, um, um, Scott Smith now to speak a little bit to that. Sure. And hey, Glenn, I just read a, a new report just came out uh, earlier this week about the trends in sports, and you nailed it. No matter what else goes down, sports continues to go up. They're going to sacrifice other things to make sure that, that they're involved in their sports. So what I want to do is give a recap for you. Uh, the Sports Commission did a strategic plan a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Some of you are involved in that. Some of you are not. I'm going to give you a very brief recap, to be honest with you. I think some of this was a little lost in the transition between Ashley and I and the time between not having an executive director. And so with me being here just a little over a year and a half now, I can really speak to this much better, and I'll give you my opinion at the end. Um, so the Huddle Up Group out of Phoenix, Arizona, did this strategic plan, and in their SWOT analysis, their strengths that they listed was leadership. Now, I'd like to say that was me, but I wasn't here. So <laughs> what they were talking about was this group, our board of directors, our friends at the county, the leadership within the community. And they also listed the financial support of our government entities as a strength. Under weaknesses, they listed venues. Obviously, we've talked about that many, many times. And then they also listed financial support here, meaning we've got limited corporate community. And as you know, all of us in town are hitting up the same businesses for all the sponsorships. Opportunities were creating owned and operated events. We're going to talk a lot more about that. And then the collaborations and, and the collaboration between the Sports Commission and this group is uh, you know, fantastic and a great example of that. The threats that they listed again were new venue development. So their summary was the key to moving forward was for community stakeholders to work together to expand sports tourism. I think we're doing a fantastic job of doing that. They said to have a unified effort and it will continue to drive room nights and economic impact. I think we all agree that, that this group is working to make that happen. So Basically, we need to focus on creating events, and if you read that strategic plan, you'll see Richmond, 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 and I'm going to tell you what that means here in a little bit. But we don't need to be reactionary. We need to have an entrepreneurial mindset as far as creating and starting these events and pushing them forward uh, and not just waiting for something to happen. And then the other thing that they recommended was help incubate and support additional community sporting events that weren't the sports commissions. And I think we've done a great job of that. We 
support the East Coast Invitational Basketball, the Jimmy Anderson Golf, Senior Softball, Ragnarok Strongman, some of the races. So we take money from our budget and help support these events and help them grow ones that are going to result in room nights, not just, you know, festival down the street. So you've heard me say Richmond, Richmond, Richmond. Before I get into Richmond, let me tell you how it works across the nation. Typically, a sports commission, CVB, whatever, they either primarily have all bid events. They just bid on regional and national events and bring those to their town. They create their own events. Obviously, there's some mix there. I can tell you that most are closer to all bid events. If you look across the nation, there's not a lot of cities that have a lot of owned and operated events. Now, the Richmond study. In 98, they were a struggling nonprofit. They were unstable, unsustainable, and probably weren't going to be around very long. And they took over a marathon that the newspaper there had ran for years and for whatever reason was going to let it just go defunct. And it had about 2,000 folks in it. I can tell you it's grown to over 19,000. Two years later, they added a 10K and it had about 2,500 the first year, and it's grown to over 10,000. So the light bulb went off for their board of directors. And what they said there in 2001 was, we're gonna start creating our own events. The key though is they knew that some of those events would lose money in the first couple of years before becoming profitable. So again, they had that entrepreneurial mindset, not we gotta make money year one and it's gotta have 10,000 people. So they had that vision. And they said the key was that over time, these would grow, but it also would create a quality of life for its citizens. And as you know, that's what we try to accomplish with a lot of our events. Now, to just fast forward to today to tell you what the Richmond sports backers, they have 25 full-time employees and a multi-million dollar annual budget. So now, understand we're not Richmond. We don't have their population or the millions within a one-hour drive, but it shows what you can, can go to. So really, as far as us looking back, it, you know, if I were to write this strategic plan today, having been here now almost two years, I don't think that I would change a word of it. Because of our venue challenges, we really can't bid on very many events. Of all the things that come across my desk, of the folks we talk to at the annual conventions, you're probably looking at one to two percent of things that we can bid on. Now, we're going to bid on things that we can. As you know, we bid and have a uh, fishing championship coming here in 2020, and we've been on some cycling and some other things. So, so they do exist, but they're few and far between as far as us meeting all the things in their RFPs that you have to have to have an event. And, and to be honest, creating our own events has some challenges with venues, but we can work with what we have and take advantage of what we have and, and create events around that. So, you know, again, I would just encourage you as, as we go forward in this partnership and as we consider uh, what we're going to do, we just need to give some events some time to uh, not only make them profitable, hopefully, which then can, in time, maybe lessen the support that we need from this organization to some extent. But also, some of these events are going to take a little time to grow room night wise. I'll use New River Splash as an example. If, if we can make New River Splash successful over the next couple of years, because we don't have a triathlon in this area, I think we'll start pulling in Wilmington and Fayetteville and, and some of those folks. But you know, a lot of those folks aren't gonna come year one. They're gonna see what happens or hear word of mouth. So we gotta give things a couple of years. And we also just have to understand that not everything will work. Uh, I think we've been around long enough and have experience and uh, most of the things will probably work. And even if they don't go gangbusters, they won't be a complete failure. It'll just be, well, we kind of broke even. Let's try something else. But every once in a while, I'm sure something will happen that just does not work, and we have to abandon it and try something new. So that is a quick recap of that strategic plan. We can provide you a full copy of that if you would like to read it or, or weren't involved in that process. But in regards to that, is there any questions I can answer or anything I can comment on for you? Anyone have any questions? Anything you want to add? I'm going to add it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll push the button. Great transition. Obviously, one of the things that we want to talk to you about if you approve the strategic plan is changing the scope of the Sports Development Fund. 
That was an expansion fund. We now think that this process is working. If it's truly to be entrepreneurial, they have to have the staff in which to do that. And that's not just one person over there. And so consequently, that's going to be something that we're hoping that this truly inspires, creates, makes more revenue. So they are less dependent upon government funding for occupancy tax funding and other things. They're probably not going to ever be totally off that, but it's a matter of they should reap some of the benefits of the increased funding too, as it was. So that's going to be something we're going to go from in the future there. Let's also talk a little bit about impact of what has been done over the last couple of months based on the past um, strategic plan, the one that we're working on right now. Well, we'd all be fooled if we just didn't talk about the one word that came to visit here, Florence. And of course, as noted from these deer swing across Court Street, you know, it was an unusual event. And it changed a whole lot of things here for us as it was. Among them, though, was the wizardry of what our consultants and others came up with about saying, well, let's, let's, let's brag on what we've got to work with. What have we got? And the river opened quickly and was great for fishing. So we put out videos about fall fishing on the new river, and it took traction. It got people to talk about what they could do, and some that came here, we talked to some of the captains that manage those type of things that are out there um, doing these guides, and it, it had an impact. We also had great traction leading up to what was to be the first new river splash. And we really told the story of that river, and it gave us such great hope that we could continue telling that story as part of what we wanted to advance. But obviously, Florence took care of that. And the Beirut Memorial Observance, this being the 35th year, we had really pushed out the story. Susan worked tirelessly trying to push out our story. We just couldn't get traction with all the noise from the storm. It just would not take. And so we, we, obviously it was a great event. I mean, it was well attended and our community turned out, but we were trying to use it much like we did with Montford Point and some others to get the word really out about Montford, about Beirut Memorial and such there. So we had some events that were also hampered by space limitations, as you've heard. And you've heard this, you know, theme throughout, so we don't need to go on it. And Susan admitted we had to change that bargain beach to value beach because the room rates that... Chris and others are getting. We don't begrudge them one bit getting those room rates that are out there now. It, does, it makes it a little less of a bargain beach, but we can say it's a value beach um, effort as it was there too. The story of the river continues to resonate. It is such a powerful story when we tell that about this community's call to action and the resurgence and restoration of that. And that's going to be even a bigger story against the backdrop of the Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center. This was a picture from yesterday, by the way, of the current status of the, the matter. We also, and Houston can speak to this, I'm confident, the story about getting out the Montford Point search for those that have yet to be recognized resonates. We get a lot of push. We get a lot of reaction to that, and it's a great story. People want to help share that story, and we used it around holidays when your home people are home. Ask grandfather, was he ever in the Marine Corps? Arts and music. At Visit NC, the state conference, at the League of uh, Municipalities that we have the current chairman of and uh, president of with us here now for a few more weeks. And those things, you hear about so many communities that were, that were really transformed by pushing arts and music in their downtown area, in other areas, in places there. And we're at a moment where we have, have come to know the Arts Council is in significant problems. There is a real problem. There are... There, it, is, it is possible for them to close their doors. And so we not need to do this just to resurrect them, but we need to do it because art and music and the, and the community is an important thing to do. So we'll be talking more about that with you later as that. The Zing Zoom Children's Museum has come online and it gets visitation. Um, you know, and this little boy named Watts seems to like it a lot. There. <laughs> and also the city has acquired the former Handy Mart um, um, you know, um, the convenience store, and um, that is it's closed now, and the city has taken that over, and this will become what we remember. We all had the problem about what the visitor center was going to look like within um, Jacksonville Landing, within the constraints of that. So this will be a temporary potential, uh, temporary location for a visitor center um, at that location. And now we want to talk a little bit about the implementation, and we have to have our web be the hub to the events. And so consequently, a lot of work has taken place already. A lot more needs to be done about that. 
We've got to display our brand. We've got to make it sure after we've been advertising it all over the place that people see it when they come here. The database has, we just didn't get to that this year. and We were overcome by events and that hasn't happened. And our partnerships, we want to continue to deepen them. We've got some great ones and we want to make even more so on that. And we need to continue to survey for success. This is what we found in the successful communities is if you keep doing that work as it was. Our partnerships work. We do, we are, we are leveraged our power much more by having <coughs> these partnerships than anything. We're told continuously to develop the area and view when we package it, when we market it, to view it as a whole, not just within the corporate limits of the city. Outdoor adventures, it moves people to action. They want that type of stuff. The Tourism Promotion Fund, we're suggesting we continue that, but at the next meeting, we're going to bring you some realignment of that, and it kind of moves with some of these plans that we have and the effects there about, because there are some events that are strong into music, and they can help provide that type of background. And we want to work those initiatives as it was. Now, I've given you the overview, and hopefully quickly enough on that matter, but um, I wanted now just to have our consultants speak briefly as to um, their view of this. After all, that's why we've got experts here, and so we've got them to come and talk. Thank you, Susan. You may, but if you would like to sit, you can too. <laughs> I'll sit, I'll sit. Well, first of all, it seems so snappy to call me a consultant. I feel like we're friends now. Well, we are. Lock the arm and arm. check comes. That's like, <laughs> that's like value instead of marketing. Right. It's a better word. Right, yeah. right exactly. Um, I feel like I, I've got, you know, I'm, something serious is about to happen when I have my clipboard. Um, we're about to greet, and this is my name tag. Teresa's got hers on, and we'll bolt out of here as soon as we finish. But we're about to welcome five major journalists from Raleigh into um, our, our area tonight. They're staying at the Hampton Inn. I can't tell you what Chris and his team have already done to roll out the hospitality. One of the things as I drove from Charlotte last week that really, uh, or, or earlier this week, that has really stuck to me is, is one of the assets that we haven't talked about as much, but when we start to make these points about the Montford Point Marines or about our military heritage, is that this place, our stories revolve around what people did. God gave us beautiful waterways and beautiful land, but it's the people of Jacksonville that have made this place come to life for visitors. For instance, we're going to be introducing our media tomorrow um, to Regina, who works at um, the Hampton Inn and has done this extraordinary transformation of their morning waffle service. That doesn't happen everywhere. Our Hampton Inn happens to be one of the only green certified, green lead certified Hampton Inns anywhere near here. That's an exceptional thing, and the, and the people that we're bringing here know that. So um, Houston is going to be talking this afternoon, and, and we're going to do some work on getting some people to that August Montford Point Marine ceremony. Um, one of our, our folks, Scott um, Mason with WRAL TV, has already done one Montford Point Marine story in his past, but what we want to do is get him on track with our message and get him to bring that message up. Do you know a Montford Point Marine? Let's find these people and that kind of thing and then bring them to Jacksonville. Um, as, as we talk to tomorrow we're going to be with Paula and even if it lightens a little bit we've got plan B that's the clipboard exactly and, and I think we, we do have a really incredible story with the cleanup of the new river the opening of the event center I am hoping is also going to give us a news hook to talk about something new the media always likes to know new new news get it um, and so that's going to be an opportunity for us to talk and show something very concrete that people can visit and experience as well. Um, we talked about the, the Bargain Beach thing, just kind of moving that along and, and talking about us. We've done a lot of work. Teresa and I hang out in parking lots and talk to people. I'm not kidding. <laughs> and, what and, are you and, talking to them about? <laughs> what, you get in the elevator with them? Well, why are you here? And you hear why they ask everybody. Yeah, I mean, we were at Hammocks Beach and talking, well, how did you know about this place? Where are you from? And that kind of thing. And um, a lot of people come here because it's different, 
because it's a place that maybe their family came to. And a lot of families we've seen loaded with their car, you know, and their, their beach goodies and their flip flops, and they stay in Jacksonville because it's less expensive than staying on the water. And they've got every single chain restaurant right there that if they, you know, that there's something for everybody. So there are a lot of different kinds of people coming here. We're working really, really hard to target those folks. Now, there's one thing that I wanted to talk about that Glenn talked about. And, you know, we have rolled out our brand. We've got these beautiful gift bags. Um, after the journalists get here, I'll pop it up on our social media and you can see how cute they are with our flags and our beautiful logo. I, I want to just really commend our, our tourism team here for keeping that brand present and for, you know, the, this is powerful to us. This is starting to have meaning and resonance. And I just wanted to say thank you to them for continuing that. And I encourage you all to keep that at the top of your mind. Last thing I want to tell you is a little story about a client I worked with for about four or five years in Winston-Salem. In downtown Winston-Salem, there was a blighted area that was really, I mean, shuttered. There was nothing there, but they had space. And they started doing a Friday night music event during the summer. And a few years later, not only were there new businesses, many of them arts related, that had sprung up around that area, but there were new restaurants, there was a giant crafts cooperative and things like that. They still do those Friday night concerts. And like kids are out drawing chalk where they block off the streets and, and that kind of thing. And families come, there's drum circles. It's very, very festive. And um, I even worked with somebody that had a tomato festival in the middle of July. I mean, so lots and lots of fun things. So I really hope that you'll take that thought about the arts and its transformative power because Winston-Salem, just like the folks in Richmond, they went and saw what some other cities did and that was one of the things they brought back. I think that that can make a major impact here in Jacksonville. And Winston's getting known for that now. I mean, mm -hmm. really, truly, if you look at it, people think of them as the, you know, second, the next art community. Right, exactly, you're so right. Last question, and this is a request to every single one of you in this room. When Glenn talked about the power of the story, that is so true. So when you find Regina, the waffle lady, and you encounter her, when you find a business that Regina's last name is Trish, by the way. I think I love the sound of her name. But anyway, when you find a business that's making something that can be sold or marketed to tourists, when you just find somebody who's done something exceptional that makes a difference that a, a visitor can see, <laughs> will you email Glenn and tell him about that? Because those layers of stories are what shape our whole outreach. It shapes the content that goes on our website. Teresa can tell you so much more about that. And it gives us that unique thing to share, and it'll keep my writers coming back. 600 Marine Boulevard. That was good. Said pizza. You need to write that one down. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, um, okay. Susan, you're, you're absolutely on point. You know, um, arts and culture is just such a, a big topic across the state, and many communities are investing millions of dollars in arts and culture um, and proven to be successful. I think Mooresville is building a uh, six million dollar or ten million dollar facility and it, I mean you just hear it more and more and more and that's what people want and, and, and I'm particularly concerned about our Arts Council struggling as it is and and you know i think that that's just an opportunity that we have here that we don't need to let slide and if somehow we can put that as part of our strategic plan i know that it's not entirely in our venue but i think it is ultimately um, when you're talking about bringing people to a community um, when you remove arts and culture i think you're removing a, a huge segment of tourism and and other things, particularly as our military families come to visit their loved ones, what's to keep them here and what's what's the story that makes them feel like they came to a place that was neat and wanting to come back other than visiting their loved one. And I think that that's what we work so hard to do. And I think that that's just really an area outside of sports that that we really need to put some focus and emphasis on and we don't need to let that slide through our fingers, so to speak. So I hope we can do that as part of our strategic plan. Um, I know it's a hard sell when you talk about, hey, let's spend $7 million on an arts, on an arts <laughs> building, but, you know, 
you're not we're not inventing the wheel it's being done everywhere and there's a reason for that and mike so, i was in winston uh downtown a couple of weeks ago for a conference and I will bet you money that Marriott would not have done that $25 million renovation in downtown if it hadn't been for the growth that's going on that's there. Right. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. it does generate additional dollars for your community. And Scott's absolutely on point with his comments. I mean, you know, the sports is just an enormous industry and mm -hmm. has been for years. I was involved in soccer for years and years and years, traveled all over the country. And that's another area where you got communities spending hundreds of millions of dollars, not a few million dollars. And so, again, we're not inventing that wheel either. I, I mean, it's, it's proven to be very beneficial in many communities. And I think we've done well here, but I think to get to the next level, uh, we do need to, to, to be serious about getting to that next level. And at whatever that may look like, whether that's a $5 million facility or a $30 million facility, facility, whatever that is, um, understanding what those gaps are and really trying to address that in a strategic way, I think, is part of our duty uh, in moving some of these uh, initiatives forward. And, you know, we talk about these all the time. And it's easy to sort of put it underneath the uh, folder, but we really do need to keep it on the forefront of our thoughts and as we strategically move uh, tourism forward. So thank you for that. Is there any other comment? Teresa has just three I was gonna, That's okay. I was just going to add a couple of things um, on what Susan said on the beach and the value beach. Is when you see people going to the beach, not everybody wants to go to the beach for a whole week either. So we forget that some people would like to come here and do, you know, get a little bit of history with their kids or go from here to Topsail for the day and go to the, the turtle. Um, Hospital. Yeah, hospital. Um, you know, and, and so there are other things they would do besides just that. They would love to go to Mike's farm for the night. So we do have more and more opportunity with that, I think. And we just have to push that message out that, and, and get it to the right people. We have to intentionally market to the exact right people. <clears throat> so uh, that's one of our goals for this year, too. The website is um, is is paramount to our success obviously it's it's the resource it's the hub it's where everybody's going to go to get the information we have one the county has one um, we will go back and forth between the two but for us specifically we've come a long way with it but we have a lot more work to do so we are developing content as we speak and we will continue to do that along with uh, continuing to improve our search engine optimization so that when people are searching for something to do, they can find us and we show up organically from, from all of our content. So we're working hard on that. And fishing is a huge part of it and being on the water is a huge part of it. Um, additionally, we will start pushing out as soon as this is complete. We want to start pushing out some um, digital media and uh, start gathering some uh, a database, a, a good solid database. You can buy some databases um, from some great uh, companies that that harvest that, but we can start collecting our own, and we need to do that. We can do it through the website <clears throat> and some of our other marketing. And a database is a fancy name for email so that we can reach out. Everybody's like, nobody wants more emails in their inbox, but it's one of the most important marketing things we can do. It Sorry, is. We get them. And you know, in, in all of our inboxes, there are things that catch your attention because of the subject line that you will open. You may not act on it, but you will pay attention to it. So it's all about you know continuity and staying in front of people. Um, our collaboration with the county and, and the chamber is huge, and we will continue with that. It's going really well. We have collaborated on some uh, media buys. We have, uh, will continue to do. <clears throat> we're proposing that we participate in the Our State Magazine buy again this year, um, where we have three months and they have three, and that's through the Coast Coast affiliation so that we're able to afford it. Um, <clears throat> we did the Visitor's Guide together. Last summer, we printed 25,000 visitors, guys. We will be out before the fall. We'll be done. Um, so, Brett and I talked about this the other day. The airport has been through five boxes. I mean, people come in, and it's the number one thing they want there. Yeah. So, they want to know what there is to do. So, Donna and I were talking the other day. We're going to start, as soon as the website's done for her and us, early fall, we're going to start pushing um, and get our new one in design and be ready to roll a new one out the first of the year. <coughs> 
Um, so some opportunities that we have that, that we've been talking about um, are certainly, Glenn mentioned, deepening in our, our partner relationships, but that also was a topic at a um, conference of workshop that I went to, and that is working with your people like Bayonet Cruises and some of your restaurants and partnering with them, and they help us market our area because they have a following that's separate from ours. They know people that are different than we do. <clears throat> when you partner with them and feature each other, it just works hand in hand and gives the traveler, the potential traveler, and people that are already here uh, more to offer, just shows them we have more to offer. So, and when you develop those relationships, they will also come to you with um, ideas. They will, you know, if we need something for an itinerary or a, a travel package, you know, you can call on those people and say, hey, we got an idea, you know, would you mind doing, participating in this? And it, it, it really helps. Um, I know I will mention <clears throat> the Tar Heel Event Center. Uh, we went with Donna on the hospitality tour, and I had not been. I don't know if any of you have been. Uh, I knew it when it was the Tar Heel Opry House from, you know, days long gone. And um, I was amazed when I walked in that building. They, it is so transformed inside. It is like, it reminds me of House of Blues in Myrtle Beach. If, if that's what you're looking for in music, it's clean, it's completely redone. The sound system is unbelievable, tens of thousands of dollars. So <clears throat> they're packing that place and they're only doing events. It's not a bar, it's just for events. I think we can do some things they want to talk and, and do some partnerships and, and work some things out. And I think that would be a great example of, of delving into the music. He also has said, and, and I do know this from working when Kristen was here, some of their shows, 30% of their people are from out of town. They're staying in our hotels because they're going to have some drinks while they're there, so they're staying in the hotels. So I think, you know, we'll focus on some of those. Um, New River Splash, I'm just going to bring it up because I think we, we, Susan and I have been talking about weaving New River Splash and Sturgeon City together and, and telling our story about the river is just something that we have that is truly unique. And, and what the city did to clean up and restore that river is, is a story that people gravitate to. And New River Splash is a way for us to showcase the river and uh, give people the opportunity to get out on it with whatever they want to do for the day. So I think that event, like Scott said, is going to take some building, but I, I think it will evolve what it evolves to. Well, and, I, and I'll add real quick, for this year already, <laughs> we've added, for lack of a better term, to, you know, we have the competition aspect of it, but we, we're adding what we're going to call a water expo. So you're going to have fishing vendors and boating vendors and Sturgeon City will be there telling their story and inviting the aquarium and the Coast Guard and anything that you can think of that has to do with water so that it's a big family, fun, educational, day full of activities and, oh, by the way, there's a triathlon and a 5K and a stand-up paddleboard races and all these other things going on as well. So hopefully it's really something that can become a uh, almost a centerpiece for our river and an annual event. Uh, that's a lot more than just athletics or just a festival. It's kind of everything. And, and some people might say, well, you know, that part of it may cater to locals, but Truly, anybody that does a great job in tourism will tell you that your local community is, is your, they're your greatest ambassadors. They have to know who we are. They have to know what we have to offer and what assets are out there and so that they can help us tell the story. So I, for one, am, am a big fan of pushing the brand. I run across people. In, I talk to people differently now. Susan's right. I ask so many questions when I meet somebody. Where are you from? Why are you here? What's your story? It's unbelievable to me the people that don't even know about the Jim Memorial Gardens. They certainly do, they don't know about the Freedom Fountain. They don't know what it's for. I think we have some work to do in our own community, and we're embracing that, And but I think we need to, to gravitate toward that. So that's all I have. Good work. Any questions or any comments? Well, I'd make a comment. I, that we, this organization would not be as successful as it has been without 
the expertise that these folks bring to the table to guide us. So, uh, personally, I want to thank you, and uh, I want to say that you have added to this um, endeavor, and you've done a great job getting the message out around the state and around the region. And we, I couldn't be more appreciative of that. Thank, so thank you. you. Thank you, so, thank you so much. It is now your uh, deal to give us direction on whether the strategic plan is adequate, because what we're going to bring back to you in May is the spending plan, and obviously that will be driven <coughs> by whether you know we need to make changes to this or we 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 do adopt this as it was. And of course, you can reject the spending plan too. But I mean, it's it's we we would like to hear if you have that. It's thank your you. option whether you wish to adopt the plan. Okay, directors. Well, I'm going to I'm going to make a motion to adopt this plan, and in doing so, I'm going to commend uh, this document because it, it, everything that we need is in this document, in my opinion. So uh, I know there's a lot of work that's been put into this. It's a, it's a really good plan for us to follow. So I make the uh, to motion to adopt this as a strategic plan. Thank you. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I'll second, and I agree. This is very comprehensive and very well put together. Thank you. We have a good team. Any other comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I'll just make one footnote um, if this uh, um, on the music scene is such there. We, we are really blessed by having Susan's, you know, amphitheater there. And that's going to be a key part of some of the actions that we're going to propose to go. We know we can collaborate on that type of thing as it was, but that's the kind of stuff that really starts from that point. Thank you. Can I, yeah. can I Absolutely. Ask, Glenn, um, what, what's bothering, or what did bother me was the Arts Council. Uh, I drove, you know, I drive by there every day, uh, and I am really concerned about it closing down and us losing the arts festival that we have downtown to open up that encompasses music and art and everything that we're talking about. I see it mentioned in this plan, and I also yes. see that you talk about some sort of increased funding or some more funding targeted uh, toward that. I'm just, one of my points is I just would really like to see us come up with something so that place does not close down or we lose that valuable asset. I think it's a key to bringing folks back downtown and everything. So. That's all I want to say. We agree. I think most of us agree with that. Yeah. But otherwise, the plan is it's very good. It covers everything, just about. Well, I'm sure it doesn't, but we <laughs> haven't thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> just about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just have well, one. We will quick... be measuring the performance. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say no quickly, question. too, that... Glenn and, and the team at the city that work on this with us, we couldn't do it without them. I mean, they really serve this board and well, and they do a great job at it. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to move to the next order of business, which is something that obviously we've been talking about for some time, and that's our wayfinding and, and markers. Uh, we have with us Anthony Prince uh, to uh, go over some stuff with us. Stuff. Technical term. Technical. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Glenn said I had 90 seconds or less to get through these slides, so we're going to go. <laughs> I may have embellished a little bit, but we're going to go through this pretty quickly in the uh, interest of time because I know you have a long agenda, but please stop me if you have any questions, okay? We're going to give an update on the current status of our wayfinding project, and then also uh, talk a little bit about what we've done recently with the Beirut, it's a mouthful, Beirut Memorial Garden site markers, um, and also ask for some direction uh, once we provide the update as to how we should move forward. Before I talk about where we are right now, what I'd like to do is just give a very brief history as to where we've been, because I think that provides a lot of context for the decision that hopefully you'll make here in a few minutes. If you recall, back in 2017, we had an option that looked like this. Very attractive option. It was based on some work that AECOM had done for us with regards to branding and image quality, all that kind of stuff. Um, there was a lot of support for it. I believe the TDA reviewed and approved this, and the city council reviewed it as well. Um, but there were some challenges. 
the main challenge that we faced was the the um, horizontally oriented sign there on what I call the lower lawn. And so the arrow right there is pointing to the approach that's basically 17 south coming from town off the bypass. And then the one up on the, on the hill is the one that's basically with traffic going into town towards Marine Boulevard. So just some points of reference there. The issue with the horizontal oriented one was the fact that it was miles away from commercial power. And the site required commercial power because it had a flag garden. And we weren't gonna be out there taking down the flags every evening and putting them up every morning. So we at least had to have commercial power for the flags. And it was recommended that we have commercial power for the sign itself. Commercial power wasn't an option, so we had to move on. Excuse me just a minute. Sir. But I'll probably show my ignorance when I ask this question. Sure. I understand the issue of getting commercial power there. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for solar power to, to uh, power that? Well, my understanding is, is that the solar power wasn't reliable or powerful enough to light the internal shadow box. Okay. That's an internal, internally illuminated sign. So if, for instance, the solar power failed, which it does from time to time, we have it on all of our bus stops, the sign would be completely dark. But okay. the option I'll show you here in just a minute, it has solar, but it's not completely reliant upon. <clears throat> and I can't remember how much that power is going to cost, but I remember seeing it and just saying, we've got to find something else to do. The second option, you remember from 2018, we worked with uh, Mr. Brazell to come up with a great concept. Um, it, instead of having two signs, one on 17 South and one heading into town on Marine Boulevard, we only had the one. And it was going to be a much larger sign, but it was going to face towards, say, Wilmington Highway and where it transitions into Marine Boulevard. Um, the concept here was to basically embed the sign into the bank, it had four foot freestanding letters, four foot by two foot. They were going to be aluminum custom box fabrication, but the challenge with this was simply cost. The letters alone are around $100,000. And um, when we started talking to our structural engineer, one thing that he was very, very concerned about was wind loading. And the fact that here in the east, on the East Coast, of course, we know that about it very well now, wind loading, at least in this area, is around 130 miles an hour. So the structural engineers said that simply the, the box aluminum wasn't going to work. And if we wanted to do something like this, we'd have to go with high quality steel or stainless steel, which would further drive up the cost. So, you know, again, it's a, it's a great concept but once we took it from, say, the, the, the pretty picture point of view to the actual implementation, we ran into hurdles. This is where we are today. Um, we hired a landscape architect that's done a lot of work for the city in the past. Uh, she's designed all the landscaping that you see on Jacksonville Parkway, West Huff Drive, throughout town. She's also working on uh, Jacksonville Station, which is gonna be our multimodal center. She has a lot of history here with us in Jacksonville. And she came up with this option here. It's a concrete, well, it's not a concrete. I always wanted to say concrete monolithic. It's a monolithic uh, monument sign that has a brick veneer on it. And it has a concrete cap on it that's either going to be white or it's going to be light gray, something of the sort. It's four feet tall from basically the base of the brick to the top of the cap. But as it kind of fades back into that landscape berm, it, it basically tapers off to nothing. The letters are gonna be raised steel. So they're very durable. They're actually very inexpensive as well, but they will be powder coated with some retroreflective material so that they'll be able to be seen at night, even if the solar lighting isn't working. Um, and then, of course, accent lighting from the solar, um, that's just a, a, a good touch to add. It, it'll provide some, some uh, illumination of not only the sign, but also the, the landscaping as well. We're back to a two sign concept. Again, on 17 South, to me, that lower lawn is really the quintessential view of the, of the Memorial Gardens, because you've got not only the trees, but you've got the bank with the 
with the uh, knockout roses, and then of course back in the vista you can see the upper lawn. Uh, the second location is very similar to where the Vizelle concept was planned, uh, and the intent there is to not only catch traffic inbound on Wilmington Highway, but also be able to catch folks as they come off the bypass on the ramp. With this concept, we have two different options. The option that we currently have designs for, and really, I mean, we could bid it tomorrow if we so choose, is option one. Our landscape architect felt that the curvature really provided an interesting quality. Uh, the other benefit of the curvature is that it allowed us to miss some of the trees so we would have fewer to relocate. Now, either way we go, um, the trees are not going to be just removed from the site. They will be relocated and our horticulturist has plans as to where to put them. So the numbers will remain the same. On the, on the site? Yes, sir. They will be on the site. It's actually a very, very large site if you go out and walk around on it. So again, option one, we have designs, we have preliminary DOT approval. Like, yeah, like I said, if, if we chose to, we could move forward and basically bid that tomorrow. However, there is some question about whether or not we could save some money by straightening it out. You know, anytime you build something that's curved, it's a little bit more challenging to build than if it's straight. Um, we can certainly do that. I think that's a good option too. Just know that it will displace more trees and we'll have to do some additional engineering work. Um, the real downside, in my opinion, in going with option two is that it'll probably delay the project by at least 90 more days because that's, that's the minimum turnaround for our engineering firm. Again, I think they're both great options. They're six of one, half does the other. I, I have a lot of trust in our landscape architect. She does a great job. The, um, the cost that we have right now, the engineering cost that we have for the curve sign, it's very, very, very conservative. So it's got a very large contingency in it is $150,000 for both, okay? Actual cost probably be around 125 and we've talked about further reducing the cost by doing some of the work in-house with city staff meaning like the landscaping and the finish grading, et cetera. So the recommendation, um, certainly welcome any feedback that you have, but the recommendation is we'd love to take, uh, to get your support on the curve concept and be able to take it forward to city council so that we can hopefully move this project forward. Anthony, thank you uh, for that presentation. Yes, sir. Um, that way. Directors, any so what generated option two? Just somebody came along later and thought that straight would be. Well, I, honestly, it came from Richard. Okay. You know, Richard said, um, you know, usually when you build something, straight is cheaper than curved. Yeah, and at that time, we really didn't have a good sense as to what the price was going to be. So he said, well, maybe that's a good option for us to save on some money. And, and so we've looked at it. It's definitely a valid option. But, you know, my sense is whatever money we would save in straightening it out, we would probably spend in redesigning the And the question that I have, because I may have asked it already, so I apologize if sure. I did. The reason it goes from four feet to zero, is that because of the placement and the topography of where yes. it's being placed, or is that just a design? That's just part of the design. So where it's installed is on a flat plane okay so it could be a there's not a, a reason for that other than design elements. simply design okay. architecture I just to clarify. yeah the thought was that it would kind of fade into the fade vista into the, of, the, okay. of the another good thing about this option as opposed to others that we've looked at it's even though it's six feet tall it's still very low profile okay because you're going to be seeing these things at 45 55 miles an hour from it's hundreds of it's from hundreds of feet away. So while it's, it's stately and it'll certainly be evident on the site, um, it's not going to obscure what you're actually there to see, which are the trees. Um, there's, there's nothing on anything that I saw except for maybe the very first one that you shared the slide. 
to recognize the folks that, I mean, the city's logo's not on there. We don't have a logo on there. And I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the more, the more we do, and I say we, I'm talking about this group right here, uh, the more we do, we are not visually being recognized anywhere for all that we do. Um, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying we're looking to pat ourselves on the back, but we need for, to me, we need for people that view these things to understand mm -hmm. where some of the funding comes from and who has uh, been part of making this happen. And really what I'm saying is I think our logo needs to start appearing on some of these items that we fund around the city. So for that reason, I, I would ask the question, mm -hmm. what consideration has been given to recognizing that? With the we did explore an option that had the seal on there. And the question always comes when you start putting people's names on something, who all do you put on there? And so in this particular case, it would have been the city, the Tourism Development Authority, the DOT, and the Marine Corps. So once you start sizing the seals, and I'm not, I'm certainly not indicating that that's a bad idea by any stretch of the imagination. Once you start locating all of those seals on the sign, the size starts to grow, particularly if you want them to be visible at high speed from a distance. Um, of course, there's also cost considerations. It's certainly something that we can do, but we just need to be cognizant of the fact that the sign's going to get much larger and it's also going to become more expensive. Now, why does it have to become larger? It looks to me like there's enough space on the right-hand side. I see, I see the, uh, the landscaping. Mm -hmm. but well, I mean, that's the, the option, and that's a fair point. You know, the option that we looked at actually had the seals underneath Beirut Memorial Grove. And so that's one of the reasons why it became larger. If you make it taller, then of course the foundation gets deeper and it just, it starts uh, getting more and more and more expensive. I mean, it, it sounds to me like you would be interested in maybe pushing that berm back a little bit and seeing what we can place next to the letters. How many seals do we, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but have to put on there? We need to, we uh, recognize where we need to put. We had only talked about there? three, not the Marine Corps. That's, that was never. Well, that's that that's definitely advanced. one of the ones that Richard wanted to see on there. So, I mean, you well, folks have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the budget for our visitor experience. Right. I would say, in all fairness, if we want to represent the folks who contributed, who physically paid for and did the work, okay, we need to recognize the city. We need to recognize the TDA, and we also need to recognize the DOT. And the DOT would want their seal on it. Yes. Okay. I mean, if you look at the share cost of implementing the site, I mean, they've this, the site ended up costing about eight hundred thousand dollars of their money to do right. it. So um, it's only DOT's money. Yes, sir. So it would be three seals that you would feel like would have to be on there uh, if we want to recognize those who contributed, contributed to the to growth. Them. So what is the cost of the seals, although? If we're looking at a budget of a max of 150 and we well, have... Well, the actual seals, I'm not sure, would add an enormous cost. I think what right. he's talking about is the cost would be associated to... Uh, getting, in the design. Uh, in the design, get enough space to do that with. If, if we modified the sign. If modified the sign. But if we modified the grading... And That's why I asked them... I'm not the suggesting... Excuse me. I, I don't mean... Okay. I'm okay. not suggesting we modify the sign. I like the sign. I think okay. everything about that's fine. Um... I do have some strong feelings about some, having some recognition on there. Well, if I may, I have some strong feelings about having the Marine Corps uh, symbol on there as well. Since we're talking about Beirut Memorial, which encompasses the Marine Corps. And I think if you remove some of that shrubbery uh, and you put a straight barrier up, perhaps removing some of the shrubbery, you may have enough room, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I think that that's an overabundance of shrubbery <clears throat> on that bird, uh, in my opinion. But uh, I see that you would have enough space. But the only thing that I would probably add is that if you're going to 
add the Marine Corps seal, we need to make sure that by doing that and not, not putting a Navy seal on there is not going to be a problem because you had others that passed away. They had the Army. The Army. They had yeah. the Army involved. So, well, the, and we got to make sure that the message is correct yeah. as people will view it other than us. And, you know, so yeah. is it and Frank, representing just the Marines that passed away in those you know. trees or yeah. do we have others? And So that's the only thing I would add to the conversation. Yeah, that could, I could see the ad infinitum. Um, and, and frankly, sir, that's one of the reasons why we moved away from this is because it had the seals. And, you know, we kept asking, well, what about this? What I was a proponent this? of the seals because I thought that the seals that were going to be on there were going to be the city of Jacksonville and TDA. Um, so that's why I asked the question, do the others absolutely need to be on that? I think the answer is it depends on who I you think ask. the DOT needs to be on there. Yeah, they're, I they're, think it depends on who you ask. So, um, well, let me ask this question yes, before sir. we go too much further. Let's say that we add the seals. Mm -hmm. What kind of delay does that put on the project, if any? And the cost doesn't seem to be that big an issue. Mm -hmm. um, three seals. Three seals. I'm talking about three seals for right now. Uh, what what does that do to the timeline? Well, I, I think that adjusts the timeline just as if we decided to go with the straight sign. You know, it's 90 days basic for any type of design, design. revision. Well, yeah, like and then design. as far as the cost of the of the, the shields or the medallions, the seals, they're about $5,000 a piece max. Okay. I mean, that's, that's uh, a what, high, high number, but... Is there already a size to those? We, we do have a, have a size that they would need to be in order for them to be visible, yes. Visible. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what you're suggesting is pushing the berm back, mm -hmm. allowing for enough room to either go to the left or to the right, the appropriate position the, of it. If we did that, we really wouldn't have to change the design. Well, you would just push the berm back. We would just modify the grading the along the berm and, and fit and the seals in that on the, That's right. On the, and that would, be, that would be for the curve, the curve or the straight? Well, we could do either one, yes, sir. But if we did go with the straight, that we don't have the designs in hand for that, so that would still require some additional time. Do we have a, do we have a picture of the curved one? The the image is basically the same. Yeah, either one, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. But if you look at it planimetrically, this is the yeah. difference. It's the right. same size. It's just mm -hmm. right. same it's size, different. same height. And I think more, Richard more had shrubbery, more shrubbery. Richard, I mean, Richard was correct in saying that the straight one would definitely be less expensive than the curved one. Yeah, the curve is more shrubbery. That's a fact. Yeah, but visually, the curved one looks much better. What? You're just saying, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe so. Are we ready for a motion? I'd like to uh, add yeah. a question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Uh, just one thought. I think you have to ask yourself the question, what's the purpose? Is it, is it appropriate to be advertising the city, the DOT, and the TDA on this side? It's a real question. If you want to put your logo on there, that's fine. The real question is, this is a Beirut Memorial Grove. This represents 240 some people that died. Is it appropriate you make that decision? And I like, I like the shrubbery. I mean, it is a grove. I mean, you're talking about a plant-based center there. And I think the, the shrubbery leading into it is, is simple. You're gonna, that's all you're gonna see when you go by there with, as it is, stands now. You start adding two, three other things, you lose something when you add things to it. My, I, I like it as it is, curved, straight, otherwise. But as far as needing recognition, I, I don't, I don't feel. I mean, what about the original group that started planting the trees, you know, 35 years ago? I mean, well, they have a logo. They have a logo, or what? I mean, it's uh, that was the city's beautification. It was city beautification. Yeah. 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 And uh, well, so, I, my only concern, which I'm, I'm a proponent of, of the recognition of the, of the medallions, but. I have real concern about the appropriateness of how it's viewed one way or the other by others other than us. And because of the significance of this place, as Richard said, 
I just want to make sure we don't rush and make the wrong decision, and maybe we should speak to others to make sure we make the right decision, because as we view things and how others view things, as I said, you know, we put the eagle over the anger there, and you got army people that <coughs> passed away, or Navy people that passed away, are they going to be left out? So I, I, I truly believe that we need to be sure on this decision in one way or the other. And I, I don't want to speak out of turn here, sir, but I, I agree with what Richard had to say. And I also want to go back to what we were talking about just a few minutes ago. If we put one, two, or three of the seals on the sign, we're going to upset somebody who didn't get credit. Somebody, and it's all a matter of perspective. You know, Mr. Wright said, well, I, I think that the Marine Corps seal needs to be on there. And then somebody who, ha who lost someone in the Navy is going to say the same thing. I mean, I, I think you... It's, it's a very understated, it's a very timeless appearance. It's very respectful. Um, I, I agree with Richard that we probably should consider leaving this as is and uh, consider the seal on something now, else. we have put our seal on our wayfinding. Is that accurate? Did we do that? That matter has not been 100 percent resolved. Okay. We but do have space. We, we have space for. We have space way. for a seal, but whose seal we haven't decided. But again, I, I our <coughs> landscape architect has done a great job on this. It's low maintenance. It's low cost. If you're it's not very, comfortable voting on this today. You don't have to. I, I mean, I, am I, if I'm in order, I'd like to make a motion to table uh, this subject right now. Okay. Maybe bring it up. Uh, at our next meeting, give some thought to this because you're absolutely right. I'm selfish because I was in the Marine Corps, but there are a lot of folks out here that, um, you know, Navy died and, you know, other members of other services. So I, I don't want to disrespect anybody, and we really need to think about this. So that's my motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Can I have a second? Any further discussion? Again, you know, sometimes waiting, I'll just comment, sometimes waiting leads to a better result as we did in our uh, visitor center. Uh, <laughs> you know, being rushed, you know, sometimes is the best way to do things. And so we waited this long, and I just want to make sure that whatever we do is appropriate in, in the vision that we're trying to set here uh, in Certainly. our respect to the gardens, one way or the other, with emblems or without. So. Certainly. Is there anything that we can do to support the decision making in the future? Any no, images? I any, think any I would questions? encourage. I would encourage the board members. I would encourage the board members on their own to speak to associates that contacts that you have and ask these same questions, and I'll do the same. And and I would bring like it to, back for discussion. Right, and I would like to see some sort of drawing with these. Simple one. Is that okay. easy enough to do? Sure. For yeah, I mean, that's easy. Purposes? We won't. We certainly won't begin the engineering process no. on it. Just either, our conceptual. But we could do some conceptual renderings that show that show what it would look like. Yeah. Now, just for clarification, what should we include on those renderings? Are we including the three that we talked about, or are we including the Marine Corps and the well, Navy? We're not doing anything in relation to that. If I heard the motion correctly. We're, we're right now we just table, it. We're, but we're just delaying it. But I'm talking about in the future. When Why don't you just put it. a few generic seals yeah. on there yeah. just Future for generic. discussion? At least three. At least three. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Just for visual. Right. The Sports Commission of Sturgeon City in the chamber. <laughs> that sounds good. Three random Are you gonna help I have a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, okay, motion carries. Anthony, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Difficult well, subject, but we want to get it right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I fully respect the, the the thought of taking the time to make the right decision because when we put it out there, it's gonna be out there for a long, long, long time. If I could have just one more second for a wayfinding update. We've got some prototypes coming in. Um, the intent is to have those prototypes installed, hopefully before your next meeting. That way you can go out and actually look at what they, you know, how they appear in the natural environment. And then hopefully we can tag that discussion onto the discussion, to continue the discussion of them, be a little more aggressive. Thank you.
Okay, next order of business. I know it's 240, we gotta move along. Um, so let me see here, way planning is done. Next order of business is the Vietnam Veterans Visitor Center request. We've had a request from the Vietnam Veterans Group, Pat Walker is with us today, for the um, uh, visitor center uh, at the uh, for a hundred thousand dollars, the request was for a hundred thousand dollars. There was some concerns about the project. In your packet is a letter that I received. Um, let me see here on page. The letter is on page nineteen uh, from the United States Marine Corps that basically uh, answers some of the questions or concerns that we had. I guess to summarize it, I don't think anyone here has a issue with supporting uh, some funding for the project. We all, I think, believe that it's a worthwhile project. Um, if it is your desire to support the project, we can make it, as I recommended, a contingent upon uh, the conditions uh, that are met. Uh, or deny it completely. I like the idea of with the contingency. Okay. And those conditions are outlined in, in the packet that we provided for you, which basically identifies that the Navy or whoever can advance the permission to actually build the project. Um, and then, of course, some agreements that will need to be executed as a portion of that, which uh, would be to uh, understand who the daily or routine maintenance uh, will be done. Um, and those things that are in front of you, I don't need to read them out loud. They, 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 they are not in the package. package. Sure. Yeah. They're not I fully in there, there, right? We need someone to make a motion to put them on the record. In the record, okay. Well, those are my recommendations. We need a motion for what? For whatever to include these in the record. Well, we, the, these conditions are consistent with everything we've heard. Yeah. I mean, they've had it. This is nothing new. No. Um, it's just pertaining to this particular yeah, project. I, I, I make the motion that um, I want to make sh I want to make sure this motion is understood the way it's intended to be. I make a motion that we support this project. But to fund the project, these conditions have to be met. So, Reasonable. John, is that an amount there, sir? Well, a hundred thousand dollars at, at the hundred thousand dollars that we'd already. Right. If you'll read off the conditions as part of your motion, then we'll get your yeah, printed read, copy. Read read okay. Okay. The conditions are one through three. The project is approved by the Navy or whomever can advance the permission to build. Number two, that the following agreements are secured and executed. An agreement to delay or routinely operate the facility is determined. In a, an agreement for the daily maintenance for such as cleaning of the facility is reached. C, that an agreement is reached to maintain the building, which normally is the Marine Corps. And D, that the name of the facility and the use and allocation of the facility's open and storage space is determined. That's all under number two. Number three, as is the standard for capital projects that the agents of the Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority pay directly any vendor or contractor for capital cost unless specifically authorized otherwise. otherwise. Okay. That's my motion. We have that. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any more discussion? I do still am curious about the balance of funding. Is that secured otherwise, or is that still, are we like the first step and they're going to go from well, take our have, commitment to the Pat that question. Pat, can you answer that, please? Yeah, I can. We have already uh, from the county $75,000 committed. We have roughly $20,000 in our bank account for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Foundation. We are out. Um, raising funds at many different types of fundraisers, um, which is going very well. We have had several banks on board. Um, hopefully, we'd like to see all this come to 
kind of a package deal by the fall. What yeah. portion? What? How much is the total project? Four. Four hundred. Four hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. And and of course in that aspect we got Houston who is in partner uh, with us on this project. Okay. So but they're the raising money. Okay. And while you're still securing all these details, you're still trying to raise. Well, the letter money. has already gone to Sickmath. Okay. Given his permission to build, that okay. should be back by the time. It should be back not not uh, May, but our June meeting. June meeting Monday. with the bank. Okay. Perfect. It'll be back. And so, and like I said, some of those questions, where we have answers to, but they're not down in writing yet because. Which I can give to you if, if well, you would like it. We procured a, a maintenance company here in town who offered, he's a veteran, retired Marine, said he would take care of the maintenance of the building. You know, so I had those things. Already figured out. Right? Yeah, and like with the two golf carts that we want, I already got one given to us, we have it. So it, it's we're working at it. And the one thing I will say to give Ken, some peace of mind. There will be a plaque in the building, and we're breaking it down into specific donors for platinum, silver, and gold. Um, so the there. city and the county will be and re recognized appropriately. Now, the 75000 that you're getting from the county, is that their tourism money? Is that all? Yeah, probably. It is. But and then they're, they're coming, they're they're coming gonna, back. They're going to revisit it. Yeah. Uh, so you theoretically could get that for another year if you go into the next fiscal year. Right. I mean, right. You could request it. From there. Well, they've already told us to come back next year because they want to meet the 100000 the same as we asked uh, from you. Well, that's their own. Okay. So. All right, guys. We have a motion and a second. Um, an effort to keep things moving. <coughs> Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, Teresa. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you for that report. Give me that call. Give me that call. Sorry. Quite all right, I understand. Um, we have only had, we've had one event since our last meeting, and I think Kevin was going to roll a quick video and I'm just going to talk over it. It was the uh, FTM Fashion Week. Remember they moved their event to the spring. So their event, if, in case you don't remember, is a three-day event. Friday night's a comedy night. Uh, Saturday night is the fashion show and Sunday they added, last fall, they added a hair and beauty show. And uh, I have some numbers, some preliminary numbers from Latoya. Her, um, Friday night show, we went, Kim and I were there the whole weekend, and it drew about 150 people. The um, Saturday, the fashion show, of course, is uh, designed to, uh, sh so do designers can showcase their uh, collections. And she had models from all over, from Florida and from New York as well, and there were 250 people there. Sunday is the, um, in my opinion, where she's got some serious growth potential. Uh, hair shows are big, big business, and she had a lot of participation. So with very little marketing, um, we ended up giving them just a couple grand, and with very limited marketing, she grew that to 150 people that came and participated. So she had a total, there were a total of 75 uh, overnight stays, and um, that was down about 20% from the fall, but she changed the event and didn't have as much time to market it herself and didn't have enough time, didn't have the same amount of time to do her own fundraiser to put into the event. And this is a clip from the Hair and Beauty Show. <laughs> um, that's just to the end of that these are the next ones that you've got coming up yep. and you've heard that in the interest that we are going to lose some people uh, mr chair if you might want to the one item that you do need to potentially you need to vote on is that's uh, fiscal matter is a number 14 budget amendment um, okay if we'll turn to item number 14 we're asking for a budget uh, <laughs> amendment that is in front of you for consideration it's not uh, ready. No, it is ready. Oh, it is ready. It is, ready. It is in there. Okay. Page 
23, I'm sorry. And Mr. Weeks is very willing to speak to you about this. Okay, Alan? <laughs> um, this budget amendment is uh, seeking to appropriate uh, additional anticipated revenue. We've looked at where we stand now. Uh, we feel comfortable in estimating that we may, uh, that we'll get to about $1.5 million. So we need to appropriate that revenue. And is that the highest that we've had? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it has blown the roof off of it. Um, <laughs> Like your bank account. Yeah. Mine's <laughs> empty. I'll make a motion to approve the president. <laughs> Randy, I, I find that shocking. <laughs> I second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Great work. <laughs> and then, while we've got your attention, if you just look at uh, page 25, the proposed meeting schedule, you do not need to adopt them, but while you all are here, um, you know, we would really like, if you would, to, uh, to consider that, because obviously we have to start putting together calendars and other things as it is. And it's basically the same flow. It Thursday. is, exactly. It's the last Thursday of the months that you meet in, with the exception of November, which we none of us want to be here on Thanksgiving no. Day. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, okay, done. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I must, you. must leave the meeting. I have to get to Virginia by 7.30, so uh, be careful out there. Thank you. I will. Thank you so much for uh, everything that we've done. And I will see you next meeting. Okay, we're going to hear some reports. Um, getting back to um, Number 10 is in your packet, uh, which basically is an update on the Zing, Zing Zung Children's Museum, which is doing fantastic. And um, we just wanted to show you a few other pictures that um, are in there. Um, and so if you haven't been there, it's um, they are operating mostly in the evenings and, and on the weekends, and they've had some 8,000 visitors there, and um, uh, they, are, they are happy campers. Over there. And I do want to mention they put it in their letter that this was a project adopted by the Chambers Leadership class this year. I do not, cannot tell you how much sweat equity, but I can tell you cash. They raised $10,050 to do the two projects in there. So I am extremely proud of this leadership class. Yep. Um, okay, Paula Sturgeon City. Thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and directors for having me here. Uh, just going to give you a brief update. Um, as Glenn mentioned, we are in full swing prep for our Saturday Earth Day program. Um, actually, before that, tomorrow we'll be having our Friday Earth Day program, which this is our ninth year of operating that, which is a field trip program for the kids. These are actually a couple photos from last year's event. Um, and we will have about 700 school kids from Onslow County out at our site tomorrow throughout the day. And we'll also be hosting some folks from the FAM tour um, out there tomorrow as well. Um, and then just to kind of talk more about our spring and summer programs, I've mentioned before, but of course we're um, in full swing registering for our Camp Sturgeon Summer Camp Program. We'll be offering um, our middle school age group the full summer for the first time this summer, so we're excited for that. And um, we've been bringing back the past couple years our field trips during the summer, where other area daycares and other area camps, even like our recreation folks, um, can bring their students out to our site to do add-ons to their programs as part of Sturgeon City. So we're booking several of those. Um, we participated um, in a STEM expo in Greenville in March. Um, I think I mentioned that um, briefly last time, or Glenn did for me. Um, but that was great. Um, one of our partner museums up there, A Time for Science, hosted that. And we were happy to attend. And um, I was not present at last month's meeting because I was at the Business Expo that same day um, with a couple of my board members. And um, we had some great response, just talking specifically about the Education Center coming online, uh, meeting with several folks, talking to some business partners. Um, we saw a few of the hoteliers out there. We saw a few of the chamber folks out there. So that was a great opportunity for us to do some meet and greet and get some information. And just a couple of photos of some of our programs, um, give you guys a little highlight the things that we'll be doing this summer. <clears throat> couple more pictures. Um, I know Glenn already briefly showed one earlier, um, a couple interior photos. It even looks a little bit nicer than this since I took these because they're very actively working in there every day. Um, we're hoping to be coming up on substantial completion here um, in the first couple weeks of May um, and to keep your eyes and ears open for um, our opening ceremony event to be happening in June. So we'll be announcing that hopefully soon. 
Um, and as of many of you are aware, we have been in conversations with the folks um, at the Shriners about their far fall ceremonial event. So we'll be having some folks from that group actually come down to finally lay eyes on the facility here soon, hopefully, and have some further conversations with us. I've got a couple more photos here. I think Glenn showed a somewhat similar one, but our nice covered walkway where the students go, um, a little shot of what our motorized walls will actually look like, being able to split our large room into three separate rooms. Um, again, we've been in full swing with our strategic marketing efforts. Um, thank you for fun helping to fund that position um, through the chamber. We've been working with them um, very actively to get things going and ready um, for our opening of our facility, as they also, of course, work with other um, centers and locations. Um, we will be holding our own ABC permit um, liquor license for this facility, um, so we'll be able to offer that um, nice and easy for any folks interested in renting it uh, for those types of events. And um, just going through here again, um, coming up on Saturday, um, we're having our Earth Day Festival. Fingers crossed it's looking like great weather. <laughs> the rain will come and go tomorrow. Um, and um, we've got a slew of different vendors coming. We'll have some live animals. We've got a couple dance performances. We'll have the DJ out there. Um, again, also being able to show up our site. Um, also tomorrow as our Earth Day program for the students, um, Susan Dozier will be out there with her um, folks from the fam tour, getting some highlights of us, doing stuff with the kids, learning about Sturgeon City, and hopefully maybe getting to take a boat ride and learn some about the Oyster Highway Project weather uh, permitting, of course. And again, we're continuing to partner with the military reunion efforts. Um, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> so we'll be hoping to, um, to be able to be a good highlight for that with our new center. And we've been talking a lot with a lot of our local and regional museum partners. And we're gonna have this great lobby, kind of pre-function space in our new center about being able to have traveling exhibits um, that would also give us opportunities to have specific events centered around those traveling exhibits tying back the educational piece, but also the promotion piece um, along with that for tourism. And um, we participated this year, um, just the first week of April at the um, State of the Region and the E2 Summit, the NC East Alliance puts this together. Um, part of their efforts to drive economic development, um, focusing on your STEM fields, bringing together your, your local businesses, um, your educators, your museums, and your different science efforts to talk about kind of K to career types of plans. So that was a great chance to just kind of meet with some of the regional folks um, and be present and be seen at that event. And that is a super quick and dirty version. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's great. I mean, we're very excited about the grand opening. Yes, yes, coming soon. So we're excited yeah. too. We've had a lot of people ask me. Uh, it's starting to really gain some interest. And that's well, awesome. we can go ahead and announce the date. It's been locked in at June 26th oh, okay. at 9.30 a.m. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks. <laughs> that's cold. Paula, thank you. Yes, thank you guys very much. I'm actually going to slip out. I apologize. No worries. I promise I'll have somewhere to slip off to. For, for the sake of time, I'll just mention a couple of things. And I can, How much I, time do you really want? <laughs> uh, it won't be Anthony's 90 seconds. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> next... Next Thursday is our Hall of Fame event. We are sold out. Everyone wanted those Glenn Hargan tickets, so we're, <laughs> we, are, we are sold out for that. Uh, May 18th is Beat the Bridge. That's our next event. And then uh, we'll be going to, this is our, there's lots of sports conferences, as you can imagine, across the nation. But our main one is the National Association of Sports Commissions. We'll be heading out for there on the 6th of May to Knoxville, uh, where we can meet with these folks that have events to bid on, as well as educational sessions. So we'll be there for about four days. And I'll update you on everything else next week. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And thank you for all your work. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, tourism work by the chamber. Okay. Um, Donna is not here today because she is with some of our travel writers that we've brought to the area through Lori Road Communications. So she's out showing off the area as well. Uh, one of the things that has been a lot of fun for these they're getting to go shelling over on Bear Island, and oh, they right. just think that is the greatest thing, something new and different. So we're very thrilled mm -hmm. with that. Um, like Teresa says, websites just will not go away. I don't think you will ever be through with the website. We continue to put hours into our website. And the last thing I'll mention, uh, Teresa says something about those visitor guides. Well, we partnered with Duplin County last week and was at the Southern Women's Show in Raleigh. That's a four-day event. Thought they had plenty of those visitor guides. Had to call the Visit NC people to run over by the Visitor Center in Raleigh to bring us a couple more boxes because they 
completely ran out of those visitors guide at the Southern Women Show. So lots of information out to the decision makers and the family. So we're hoping to see some good return on that. That's all I have, but uh, Lisa Murabito is with me today. Um, her work with the military reunions, I, it's hard to believe we've been doing it three years. It seems like time has flown. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, but it has really, really gained traction, and she has just a couple of things she would like to share with you. Yeah, I'm just excited to say we have three in the month of May. So we have Second Force Recon, who, which is returning this year. They were last year with me. Um, I have NARFI, who's the National Active Retiree Federal Employees Convention. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> right. And then I have three, <laughs> 38 communicators um, that will be actually um, taking them out. It's only about 25 of them, but we hope to grow um, not only them, but it, they are a part of multiple. And then um, I, since now, I have a lot of my things in place because we've been almost doing it for three years, um, I'm really starting to prospect reunions, reach out to the specific targeting, correct people and stuff, and researching who's done reunions in the past and specifically email them. And so hopefully 2020, 2021 will fill up very quickly. I already have uh, um, not only one for 2020, but I most likely will have a second one for July 2020. So Great, work. Awesome. Great work. Thank you. Any questions, Felisa? Guys, thank you so much for your updates. That, that's great. Um, we've already been through the budget amendment, proposed meeting schedule, and now I guess the best news, the collection status. It's um, You can read for yourself, but I'll tell you it's um, it's amazing. I mean, 60 near 60% up. We're already at $1.1 million for this year. Compare that for the same time last year at 648 uh, that's, you know, doesn't take rocket science to do math in public there, but that's twice, you know, I mean, that's what that is, okay. And then, uh, you know, looking at this thing, we know what it is. Obviously, Florence made some big, uh, big bumps in the deal. But again, I tell you, you got to look at those July, August numbers. We were above the numbers that we were for FY18 and, of course, above those that we were at back FY11, which was the largest year we had ever done in the time. It's like, can we just wipe away everything from FY12 to FY17 and go from there? But anyway, we were able to get the good things done, so that's it. And again, this is the, to, um, to date by year, and so we have just blown everything out of the water in that situation. And here's what the collections are for the entirety of any year in the past compared to where we are right now with only the, um, the, with the three months left to, to do on the matter. So again, the projection that our... Finance folks has made is 1.5 million and um, great news. Thank you. Um, one city moment, Glenn. Um, we didn't prepare one. We thought this was going to be long enough that you were going to be wanting to chase us out the door. At that no worries. Yeah. And we've already adopted the budget, so 17 is taken care of. So, any comments from directors? I'm sorry to keep you so long. We just had a lot of stuff to. Uh, Good. No comments. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.